So here we have false teacher Greg Lott. Now, this is the same guy. If you've been subscribed to my channel for any amount of time, you've seen the video that I posted of this man basically pronouncing to his whole church that he's going to expose six witches and then give out their addresses. So this guy is absolutely ridiculous. And now he's coming for John MacArthur and Justin Peters for being cessationists, of which I am as well. And here's the thing about these radical hyper continuationists. You want to know why they are so passionate and adamant about the, the gifts not ceasing? It's because they still want to be able to they want they want an excuse to be able to perform all these demonic false acts in the name of the Holy Spirit. They want to be able to speak in unknown tongues and lay hands on people and cast out demons and all this other nonsense that comes with it. So therefore, they have to defend it. But they do it unbiblically. OK, they just do it unbiblically. And it's um, it's all man centered at the end of the day. It's all man centered. And Jesus never preached the gospel or commissioned people to preach the gospel in which he did not give them power over unclean spirits. The gifts have not ceased. The discerning of spirits is still alive. And I gladly, gracefully, double dog dare any big name, big britches preacher in America to debate the idea that the gift, I don't care if it's John MacArthur, I don't care if it's Justin Peters, I don't care who it is. The gifts have not ceased and you have lied to people and you keep people in bondage because it feeds your ego. Most of you know that a few months ago we had a strange fire conference and uh, we, we talked about the aberrant charismatic Pentecostal movement that has dominated the evangelical landscape and even spread around the world. Somewhere between half a billion and 750 million people claim to be a part of this movement. And it raised the question of what is called cessationism. Uh, that kind of awkward word simply defines the belief that the New Testament miraculous gifts ceased. They ceased. That has been the normative historical view of the church through the church's life, going all the way back to the New Testament and on into the modern era. But since the turn of the 20th century, there has been the birth of a of a strange uh, Pentecostal and then charismatic movement that wants to affirm that all, all the sign gifts, miraculous gifts are back, including prophets, including apostles. Uh, and you might say, well, does it really matter? Is it a peripheral issue? Well, uh, depends on what you mean by peripheral. Um, it doesn't affect the gospel necessarily. But, but it affects something very, very important that is related to the gospel, and that is divine revelation. Because if you're saying God is still speaking through prophets, still speaking through apostles, then he's not finished speaking. So that I need my Bible and a prophet or prophets, my Bible and some apostles, that I don't have everything sufficient in the word of God. And so I need some miraculous gift to get me through, some miraculous word of knowledge, word of wisdom, some miraculous insight, some uh, divine experience, some transcendent kind of thing, or I can't make it as a, as a Christian. I, I need that. Uh, that, that. That introduces an entirely out-of-control element to the closed canon of Scripture and an entirely out of control element to Christian living. Because people then are subject to the whim of the people they trust as prophets and apostles. And they're subject to the whim of what they feel is a word from God or a message from God. They're subject to uh, promises of healing and wealth and all of that that are illegitimate promises. So, first of all, it's, it's not tr true. It's not right to propagate something that's not true. Secondly, it clouds the issue of the Word of God being sufficient and complete. And thirdly, it adds an element into spiritual living that is completely mystical and arbitrary. When all that we need is in the Word of God, and the Spirit quickens what is in the Word of God to accomplish all His goals in us, in our Christian living. It matters a lot. And that's why we've addressed it and we'll continue to answer questions that came out of Strange Fire 
to try to make sure we do everything we can to, to clear this away so that the truth can be known. People's lives are at stake. That people are in that movement hearing a false gospel. Many people in that movement have a false understanding of sanctification, which debilitates them and can't sanctify their, their flesh. So the truth always matters, and it's always powerful. And we'll continue to make issues that may seem to some people peripheral, make them the main thing because they have such implications as this one does.